brings us to webinar one, which is about inspiration and concept. Question one really had to do a lot with where do I start? You know, where do I get level inspiration from? What should I do to come up with ideas for levels? Uh, those, those were the questions. And the answer to that is that inspiration comes from where you find it, whatever is inspirational to you. Now, I realize that is maybe not so useful, so I just let's talk about that for just a second. Um, a terrific place to get inspiration from is movies. Hollywood does, actually any movie makers, uh, yeah, I just don't want to exclusively limit ourselves to Hollywood movies. Um, movie makers all, all over the world do a fantastic job of creating amazing, tense, dramatic scenes that are filled with action. And so... Movies are a great place to get inspiration for particular sequences or concepts for uh, level action. And there are so many different movies dealing with so many different topics um, that that's a, you know, a, an endless source that you can plumb, not just the new blockbusters, but even going back through older movies and older catalog movies, that's a great place to come up with concepts or ideas. But Comics are also a fantastic resource for inspiration. Um, the One of the reasons that comic book artists are so uh, popular in movie, uh, in the movie development process is that they've been trained almost in how to storyboard, a, a, you know, an action sequence or a story. Uh, they can tell it in you know, these sequence, sequential panels one after the other. It, of course, depends on the artist, but uh, the point that I'm getting at is that interesting settings, interesting bits of action, um, you know, cool character abilities, you know, comics are a great source for that. Anime is another very interesting source. I, I differentiate this from movies specifically because of the cultural background of the people that are doing anime and the way in which anime is created. Um, the thing that's interesting about some types of anime is that uh, a lot of anime is created from a particularly successful manga sequence. Where manga is the big, thick comic books that, that the Japanese love to read. Um, some are created that way. Some other ones are almost created like a, a factory assembly line. They'll say, this person is a great character designer. This person is a great vehicle designer this person is a good storyteller we're going to take them and shove them together and they're going to you know manufacture a story and some work really well and some don't but the juxtaposition of those ideas and those creative instincts uh, are can be fascinating absolutely uh, fascinating so i put that in a different category for movies uh, just for that reason alone but also because like i say the cultural background the in and the influences are are so different from western movies All right, pushing on. Needless to say, uh, I'm an old school writer and author, so books are great. Um, I got my I got my start um, as a as a writer, and I found my way into science fiction and being a nerd through my you know through reading really when I was a kid. So never overlook the incredible importance or impact that really great novels or great fiction can have in terms of just giving you ideas for setting and, and concepts. But uh, there are, inspiration can come from anywhere. And that's kind of what I wanted to show with this slide is that it can come from dance. It can come from theater. It can come from being at a, an amusement park, particularly interesting amusement park. It could come from nature. Uh, if you look at the kind of grandeur and the interest of all of these pictures, my advice to to anyone who's in this process is be open to where inspiration can come from. Moments of motion, moments of emotion uh, can, can really come from anywhere. It can make the basis of great levels. If you look at the picture in the lower right-hand corner, that, you know, the beautiful canyon with the river flowing through it, um, it kind of leads me to my next point, which is, a, which is a question that I 
again, in the, the question of you know, where do you come up with ideas? Um, I moved this out of order. I, I had this a little bit later in the, se the sequence, but it seemed kind of to be a good segue to, to get to it here. Where do you start uh, with your concept for multiplayer level designs? The answer to that is I like to start with a, what I call a structural theme. Um, a structural theme and the idea of level themes is, is something that I kind of cover more deeply later on, but the idea of level themes is uh, a theme is a way of thinking about levels as a combination of concept and execution that's weighted heavily in, in some particular creative and design philosophy. Uh, structural theme is one that's very heavily based on the physical structure of the level. So let me give you an example here. Um, if you're familiar with my work, you'll know that these are two levels that I designed for the original Halo, uh, Halo Combat Evolved. On the top, you can see what I like to call a flow map of Blood Gulch. It's a, a kind of an oversimplification of, of the actual level itself. But Blood Gulch as a structural theme is a figure eight. The two bases are at either end. They're represented by the blue dots in case you're not familiar with the level, which I have to tell you, if you... If you don't know the level, it hurts my feelings. <laughs> but it makes me cry on the inside. Um, but anyway, uh, the two blue dots are the, you know, the, the two bases in the level. And the rest, the rest of the shape is deliberately designed to make a perfect figure eight. So that as players are flowing through the space, they're always being directed back into where the action is. Even the side... Uh, paths. The, the one on the bottom is meant to represent the caves in Blood Gulch, and the one on the top is kind of meant to represent the, the upper, there's a high ridge walkway that goes along the side of the map there. Uh, even both of those ultimately flow back into the figure eight pattern, so that it's impossible to get lost, it's impossible to, you know, become completely isolated from the action. Uh, it's an interesting, at least to me, uh, it's a very strong structural flow. Sidewinder is another map, maybe not as successful as Blood Gulch, and it's interesting, you know, with with however many years of hindsight looking back on it, I see some things about that map that I would do differently today. But still, you can see that it's a horseshoe. Um, the Sidewinder map is the two bases that are at the bottom of the the diagram, the two rectangles sticking out the bottom, and the actual map itself is a big icy canyon that connects the two. And the action of the map is sort of flowing through that canyon back and forth or using the series of tunnels that connect the two bases or the little orange dots represent a series of teleporters that sort of go across the top chain. Um, so there are three ways to sort of make your way through that horseshoe shape, but the horseshoe shape dictates everything about the flow of the map and the, the structure of the gameplay. And I find that to be an incredibly powerful way of shaping the, the gameplay on a, on a multiplayer map. Okay, moving on, boom, let's see what's next. Uh, what do you do after reading the design docs for a game if you're working on this level designer? This was a very common question. What should I do about process? How do I approach that? For me, the most important thing uh, to do is to discuss the intentions of the project with everyone who is involved. And I mean everyone. Try to understand from the business perspective, try to understand from the artistic perspective, from the technical perspective, what are the intentions that we are trying to achieve? What are we trying to express with this design? I have an interesting quote that might apply. The immortal Greek philosopher Plato said, the beginning is the most important part of the work. And what that means, in case it's not immediately self-evident, is it's how you start, at least to me. It's how you start. It's the direction that you start and how you set your intentions that are going to dictate so much about the rest of the process. And this is overlooked, I think, very often by designers or developers who are excited about games, they're excited about uh, 
you know, the, the process of working on games. They might be excited by the collaborative aspect of working together with other people and they'll sort of dive in and start to do without necessarily being crystal clear on what are we exactly trying to achieve? What is our goal with this project or with this product? And I guarantee you, if you put very clear focus on intention at the beginning, it will have a massive impact on the actual process uh, as you're as you're working later on in the project. You know, let's say your intention is to get hired as a you know by a, on a science fiction team for a, an established intellectual property like Halo, and you want to prove that you have the ability to do that kind of work. But there's a team that's standing in front of you saying, "Oh, well, we want you to model dungeons and castles." That's it doesn't it's not synced up with your intention. So being clear about what you want to try to achieve at the start. Is incredibly valuable and incredibly important. Okay, moving on. Uh, question number four, got a lot of this. How do you start? Where should I start? What's the first thing that I should do? Um, the answer to me is I like to go from the macro down to the micro. And I'm not just talking about an individual, the, the macro or micro details on an individual map. I'm actually talking about even more than that. Let's take uh, so f in the macro to micro process, I like to start with project wide intentions. What are we trying to accomplish as a project? What are we trying to do? Then the next step down on the macro to micro process would be, let's talk about the actual level design parameters that we want to operate under. So for example, example off the top of my head, it might be something like, uh, we're making a fantasy RPG, but there are no dungeons. You, know, you set that as a thing. All right, well, in our world, there's no such thing as dungeons. Okay, well, where do the adventures happen? Well, they're only going to happen in ruins and caves, for example, or something like that. Um, then you, by setting those parameters, you understand, okay, when I'm approaching this, I should be thinking uh, in terms of designing, uh, designing in terms of, ruins and caves. Overland ruins, likely, you know, different types of ruins and or natural cave formations. Just take dungeons out of the mix. Crazy traps, you know, spring-loaded doors and all the rest of that type of stuff. We don't have that. We do have ruin. We've got ruins and we've got caves. Uh, so then what, you know, what features into that? Those kind of level design parameters are incredibly powerful tool for teams and also for individual designers. Then I like to get into the individual level design process. So once I am clear about my over, overall project-wide intentions, move to my level design parameters, and then I start talking about an individual level design. So I don't, I don't just dive in by saying, you know, what would be really cool is like a dungeon that's built around a waterfall. I, first, I want to understand, okay, what's in my project-wide intentions? Oh, well, we want to represent a... A post or it's a fantasy setting based in a post-apocalyptic world. Oh, okay, cool, got it. All right, post-apocalyptic setting. Or sorry, fantasy setting, post-apocalyptic world. What are my level design parameters? We don't have dungeons because it is a fantasy setting, but we don't. We're not going to do the dungeon thing. Instead, we're going to have ruins and natural caves or other natural formations. Oh, okay, got it. Then I get into my individual level designs. Oh, you know, it would be cool as. Uh, instead of the dungeon that's built around a waterfall, maybe I might think about, oh, well, maybe I want a, a you know, a series of encounters or a level that's built around um, maybe a hydroelectric dam or something cool like that, you know, so I can get that sort of waterfall, or maybe I actually have, you know, a, a, a level that's actually built around Niagara Falls, for example, or something like that. Um, anyway, the point just being that Project-wide intentions, clarify down to level parameters, and then finally get to the individual level design process.